Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Today, Tesla announced at 10 a.m. this morning that they are opening up their EV connector design. So this actually happened. Um, you guys remember back in, let's see, what was it, three months ago, um, Aptera put, started a campaign to try to get America to adopt the Tesla plug as its standard which um, I was a little dubious about. I did sign their um, uh, the change.org petitions and stuff, but I didn't really think it was going to get anywhere. And we were questioning um, why Aptera was pushing the uh, Tesla plug. And my theory was is that they were trying to get Tesla to open up the supercharging network to them um, and that there wasn't any real chance that it was going to become a standard. Um, and there were a couple of uh, misconceptions that I had actually after looking at the new release. Although I don't think that it was an unfounded misconception because I think uh, Tesla changed the uh, specifications of their plug recently. But let's go over their announcement and we'll talk about it. So Tesla today, November 11th, 2022 says, opening the North American charging standard. With more than a decade of use and 20 billion EV charging miles to its name, the Tesla charging connector is the most proven in North America, offering AC charging and up to one megawatt DC charging in one slim package. It has no moving parts, it's half the size and twice as powerful as the CCS connectors. In pursuit of our mission to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, today we are opening our EV connector design to the world. We invite charging network operators and vehicle manufacturers to put the Tesla charging connector and charge port, now called the North American Charging Standard. I love how they renamed it the North American Charging Standard. It's a little presumptuous, but I gotta like the optimism. But they're, they're gonna call it the North American Charging Standard. Uh, they're naming it that. It, it's, it has not become the North American Charging Standard yet, uh, but maybe it's gonna happen now that um, Tesla is putting their um, might behind it. Uh, so it, it might happen. But anyway, they're call they're now calling it the North American Charging Standard or NAX. NAX is the most common charging standard in North America. NAX vehicles outnumber CCS 2 to 1 and Tesla supercharging network has 50, so excuse me, 60% more NAX posts than all the CCS equipped networks combined. These are all true statements. Um, there's just, you know, Tesla's been around a lot longer. Tesla ha has more EVs than anyone else combined. And uh, there's way more supercharger si sites in uh, North America, especially the United States. In Canada, I think the CCS uh, ports outnumber the uh, now NAX ports. Um, but in America, there's way more uh, NAX ports, superchargers, than there are DC fast chargers. Um, but the DC fast charging network is being built out now. It's, they're starting to build it out a lot. And in the um, Build Back Better plan, there is a lot of incentives to build a lot more charging infrastructure. So we're kind of at the beginning of charging infrastructure build out in the United States right now. So this is kind of the beginning. So uh, Tesla has a big lead, but you know there's going to be way more chargers now than there were before. I mean, we're, we have just scratched the surface on building chargers. So anyways, currently... Um, there are 60% more NAX posts. And network operators already have plans in motion to incorporate NAX at their chargers. So clearly Tesla has been talking to some um, network operators. I don't, they don't specify who it is. Is it Electrify America? Is it uh, ChargePoint? You know, who is it? We don't know. Um, EVgo, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But they, ha looks like they have already talked to one or more of them and they have already agreed to incorporate uh, NAX into their chargers. That'll open up Tesla being able to DC fast charge at uh, places outside of the superchargers. Similarly, and I think this is the more important thing for us Aptera fans, we look forward to future electric vehicles incorporating the NAX design and charging at Tesla's North American supercharging and destination charging networks. So they're saying that they're going to open up supercharging to these future electric vehicles that have NAX ports. Uh, I take this to mean that we are almost definitely getting access to the supercharger network uh, with the Aptera. Um, because uh, the Aptera is, you know, the most efficient vehicle out there. 
and it gives anyone associated with Aptera some green cred. And if Tesla opening it up to Aptera, number one, gives them a lot of green cred, more, you know, more green cred than they have now. And there's not going to be that many Apteras out there, so it doesn't really um, stress their network very much. And the uh, Aptera can use their first version superchargers that aren't quite as fast at charging their um, their newer vehicles with the big batteries, but they're plenty fast to charge the Apteras because Apteras, again, so efficient, you just need a small battery to go really far. So um, even their version one superchargers will, will charge the Aptera very quickly. So they wouldn't have to upgrade their network and, and allow access to Aptera to have like their, their first or second generation superchargers. And Aptera would be very happy to use those and it would fully charge an Aptera at the full speed probably. Okay, so uh, I think that's very good news. As a purely electrical and mechanical interface agnostic to use case and communication protocol, NAX is straightforward to adopt. The design and specifications are available for download, and we are actively working with relevant standards bodies to codify um, Tesla's charging connector as a public standard. Enjoy. So looks like they are working with um, SAE or maybe some other standards bodies to, um, uh, to nail down the specifications. So then I click this thing. And if you look here, there's technical specifications, data sheets, and some CAD drawings. Um, so I, I thought this was very interesting. So I downloaded this, the North, North American Charging Standard. We can peruse this. Uh, nothing super interesting at the beginning. Some diagrams about how this works. I'm not an electrical engineer or anything. So this sort of makes sense to me, but not, not a whole lot. Um, but there are some interesting tidbits in here. This is talking about their sequence of how they do DC charging and how they do AC charging, but we'll 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 peruse through that. This is the important this is the important thing. So they are now announcing. So for the longest time, one of the things that I read when I was looking at this Tesla plug um, debate three months ago was that the Tesla uh, charging specification could not handle greater than four hundred to 500 volts, that it could not handle the newer uh, technology of 800 to 900 volts. That seems to no longer be the case. They are redesigning um, some specifications for a thousand volt configuration. So currently all the superchargers are, um, uh, all the Teslas are 400 volt architectures. So it was thought that there was not enough pin separation to safely um, allow for 1000 volt operation but indeed they are doing that and so they're allowing for both so you can see this is the 500 volt this is the 1000 volt i looked at these specifications someone if they look at it and they can find other what's different um, i couldn't tell anything that's really different and uh, if you look at this um, they say that the two interfaces are mechanically interoperable so a thousand volt inlet can receive a 500 volt connector and a 500 volt inlet can receive a 1000 volt connector. So that means um, basically they, 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 fit it, they fit into each other and they're forward and backwards compatible. So they can't be that different. The one difference that I found if I, if I scroll through here is that on the inlet, uh, okay, so this, that's, that's the plug. Here's the socket. Okay, yeah, so if you look at the socket, here's the 500 volt socket, and here's the 1000 volt socket. So if you look at the 500 volt socket, the pin goes right to the edge. If you look at the 1000 volt socket, the pin is recessed a little bit. I believe this is for increased safety. They, um, they recessed it a little bit, so it couldn't, you know, I guess you could, it couldn't spark out or gap out as much. But that's the only difference I could find. Everything else looks fairly similar and they have to be able to fit into each other. So that's the same. But that's that's big news. So indeed, um, the, the socket and the plug can handle up to a thousand volts. One of the reasons I thought that there's no way that they were going to adopt it as a standard was that um, Porsche, Hyundai, Kia, Lucid, a bunch of other companies have moved to 800 and 900 volt architectures 
because they have are basically faster charging and more efficient at charging. And they're like, I was like, they're not going to go back to a, they, they can't adopt the Tesla standard, even if they want to, they cannot adopt the now, now called max standard because the max can only max out at 500 volts. So their vehicle architecture just does not allow them to do so. However, now it turns out that you can do it. Um, you can, uh, this, this can handle up to a thousand volt architecture. So it, it's not impossible to do it. So they, if they want to do it, they can do it. They can adopt it. Uh, the other uh, interesting thing about the Tesla design is that with uh, CCS1 or J1772, the latch is on the plug. So the plug uh, has the latch. And so anyone can unlatch your car while it's charging because they can just unlatch it off the plug. However, the latch and the lock on a, on a NAX plug is in the vehicle. So the vehicle locks the plug into place. And so you can't release the uh, plug unless you have access to the vehicle. So no one can really unla uh, unlatch your, um, your, uh, your charging prematurely on a Tesla, which is usually a good thing, I think, and might rarely be a problem if someone was like hogging the port, I guess. Uh, but generally, it's, uh, it's, it's probably a good thing that people can't unlatch you at will. And, and and stop your charging. Okay, so the NAC standard uh, exists for both uh, 500 and 1000. Oh, okay, I, I, I missed the other very important thing in here. Okay, if you go back here, this is very important. Uh, vehicle to X. The North American charging standard is compatible with vehicle to X, i.e. vehicle to load, vehicle to home, vehicle to grid, power transfer. Future versions of this technical specification will specify the functional requirements and specifications required to achieve vehicle to X power transfer. So uh, up until now, there has been no Tesla that can do vehicle to load, vehicle to home, or vehicle to grid um, through the power connector. Um, and it was not clear whether that was possible. But now it is fair, it is very clear that it is possible and they plan on making this um, part of the specification. So uh, that was one of the things that was an advantage of CCS1 because there was vehicle to grid and vehicle to home and vehicle to load, um, but looks like Tesla can also do that as well. So now that we know this, there's a couple of things that are very clear. Um, this is what Atera tweeted after this. Today is a great day for universal EV, ED, uh, EV adoption. We look forward to adopting Tesla's superior connector in our solar EVs. So now we know Aptera is for sure going to use the Tesla plug, or now called the NAX plug. And it seems highly likely that Aptera will get access to the supercharger network. So those two things are, uh, I think, very likely. And I think that's good news because the... Um, the the design of the Aptera is really for a Tesla plug. That that port in the back that's hidden by the um, license plate cover can only really fit a Tesla plug. It can't fit a CCS1 plug. The CCS1 plug is too big to fit in that area. You you may be able to fit the CCS1 plug if you turned it sideways and put it in there. It'd be very clunky, and the weight of the uh, cable uh, would would torque it sideways, which wouldn't be great. And so for Aptera, it's great news that they, they're getting uh, Tesla, uh, the Tesla plug in there and that they're almost definitely getting um, access to the supercharger network. And now that Tesla is really pushing for it, you know, Aptera is a small player. They, they don't carry much weight. Um, the, the chances that this was going to become a widespread standard was very low. But now that Tesla is pushing it, I think there's a chance and it kind of depends on how well um, Tesla can uh, talk to vehicle manufacturers and convince them to switch over to the new port. Um, you know, already if the, uh, the vehicle manufacturers want to sell in, um, in like uh, the EU, they have to use the CCS2 plug and they have to use CCS2 there and CCS1 in, Amer in North America. So it's not like they, are have, they could have picked one plug anyway. They're going to have to use two plugs anyway. Now we're going to find out 
is it actually superior in terms of implementation or economics? There was some talk earlier that the Tesla superchargers cost one third the amount of CCS1 uh, chargers, DC fast chargers to implement. And we're going to find out if that's actually true. That data actually came from sort of a, like a faulty conclusion because Texas put out this uh, grant and Tesla applied for it and they asked for one third less than other DC fast chargers. It doesn't mean that um, it actually costs one third less to, to install them. It just Tesla asked for one third less. Um, so what they asked for doesn't mean that's what it costs. But if indeed the Tesla charger costs one third the price and implementing the Tesla port in your vehicle is is easier to do and more cost effective, then I think um, adoption of the NAC standard is kind of likely. Uh, and it doesn't look like, from what I can tell, I don't know if Tesla is asking for royalties or anything. I kind of suspect that they are not asking for royalties, that they're just opening it up and hope, and this helps them in that their vehicles can, uh, can, um, charge at many other places and um, their supercharging network uh, can generate some revenue by having other vehicles come in there and charge. Now, I know in Southern California where there's a lot of Teslas, all the Tesla owners I've talked to are not super happy about opening up superchargers to other vehicles because the superchargers in Southern California are pretty busy just with Tesla cars. But in other places, it may be the superchargers are kind of underutilized and Tesla could make more money and revenue by opening up to other vehicles. But anyway, I don't think Tesla is asking for any royalties. And if, again, if the Tesla plug is easier to implement and cheaper to implement, I see this as becoming the North American standard. That is very likely to happen at this point if those things are true. If they are not true, like if it's not cheaper or not easier, then I don't see really the advantage of the other um, car makers um, joining this standard. You know, they would, they would be kind of capitulating a little bit to Tesla. And uh, I think there may be too much ego for that. But if it's cheaper, you know, money always talks. And if they can improve their bottom line by adopting the Tesla standard, I think it'd be good. And overall, I think adopting one standard is good. It just makes things easier. Um, there's uh, there's just less confusion. Things just work better if there's one standard. So I kind of hope that we move to one standard. And if it's the Tesla standard, I think I'm, I'm fine with that. For Aptera, it, it's great news overall because their design really was contingent on a small plug like uh, the Tesla plug. All right. Well, thanks for watching guys. Um, thanks as always to our supporting members. Really appreciate all your support and uh, tell me what you guys think about this in the comments. Have a great day, everyone.